I'm Shane, he's Adrian. Hang on, that's the wrong man's. Hey, oh, see what we did there? Yeah. I am Adrian in the deep southeast of England. Uh, Shane is in the Midlands. We are connected through the miracle that is uh, 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 Skype. Uh, so we can see each other, but we have spared you that indignity. You can just hear us and believe you me, seeing the uh, string vest he's wearing this evening, or is it this morning? It's timeless. A <laughs> string vest is always timeless. Um, you're not missing much uh, visually. But we are going to put on the Comedy Slab this week uh, The Wrong Man's, uh, starring uh, a certain uh, Matthew Bainton, uh, who is uh, one of your heroes, is he not, Shane? He, I, you see, you always say this about me, and, and I go, oh, sure, <laughs> mate, Matthew Bainton. Here he comes again, he's Matthew Bainton. Who it's you are, that. Matthew Bainton. <laughs> <laughs> but I do... There's a number of people in this country working in comedy. Uh, Matthew Bainton, uh, Johnny Sweet, Tim Key, um, Tom Basden, who yeah. I just think are have got great, th- greater and greater things to come. I do, but yeah, I, I'm a big, big fan. Which kind of balances out because he's he's acting opposite James Corden, who I think it's fair to say I'm not a big fan of. But you probably are, aren't you? Because well, I, we we heard last week it's a bit more complicated than that, isn't it? You you have a love hate relationship with uh, JC. Never trust anyone who's got the same initials as our Lord. Yeah. They usually have a messianic complex in my what, experience. Our Lord Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> or Jeremy Corbyn, <laughs> or Jeremy Hunt, if you think about it. His surname begins with C quite often these days, uh, but we won't go there. I think you were going to say something, and I, I railroaded over you. Um, Maybe the moment's gone. No, all I was going to say was that um, uh, there's a couple of things, actually, but probably the one I was going to say the most was mm-hmm. um, that after watching this, I'm not sure it's a love-hate relationship. Oh dear! Don't but, tell me it's a hate-hate relationship. No, I don't, it's hate's a strong word, isn't it? But it's a yeah. it's a not too keen, not a too keen <laughs> relationship. Yeah, but anyway, we'll come to that okay. a bit, won't we? Yeah, we will. And we've got three audio clips. If you're not at all familiar with the show, or even if you are, it's episode one of series one of the Wrong Man's uh, currently as we speak on BBC iPlayer for a little while. But we wanted to pick up uh, from uh, last week, did we not? Can I just say that? that I'm amazed mm. that it is still on the iPlayer because the one I've chosen for next week has only mm. just has only just been out and isn't. Uh, yes. Well, firstly, it may have been repeated recently, which is why it would, it would go back on the iPlayer. Right. But this is the catch-up service if you're perhaps uh, baffled and listening from outside the UK. Um, yeah, but but every deal is different. I mean, the BBC is trying for a, a standard across-the-board years window. Mm. Um, Channel 4 has come to an, uh, an arrangement which is a bit more creative, arguably. Um so for for uh, future uh, deals, uh, I, yeah, I'd have to have the details in front of me, and it gets a bit nerdy and a bit media industry. But mm. uh, as a as a consumer, as a viewer, I think there's a, there's a bit of good news with uh, some greater flexibility with the Channel Four arrangements. Mate, I, I wasn't passing judgment. I'm just saying I was just amazed to see that it was on there. But as you say, if it's been if it's been repeated on terrestrial, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily watch it on terrestrial. In fact, I'm thinking mm. of getting rid of my TV license. But uh, that's another story for another day. Anyway, go on. What are you going to mm. say? Uh, oh, I was just going to pick up on this uh, story. Um, thank you to loyal listener Gary for uh, bringing our attention to a story about good omens. Um, a Christian group, this is something we slabbed only last week. It was last week, wasn't it? It's been mm. a long week. It uh, seems a long time ago. But anyway, good omens uh, starring uh, Mr. Sheen, as I think we ended up having to call him because you couldn't remember his first name, uh, or Michael Sheen, as the rest of us know him, and uh, David Tennant. Um, and... Uh, this Christian group in the States, where else, took offence to it, thought it was blasphemous, and decided to petition, a, a send a 20,000-strong uh, petition to Netflix. There's only one subtle thing wrong with that, which is that Netflix had nothing whatsoever to do with its production. So they can't really carry the can for it. It was an Amazon Studios production, as the lawyers uh, listening to our last week's Comedy Slab will know, having... I- scoured it for such detail i do get it though don't you i do get the christian groups i do get if you imagine you wouldn't you wouldn't see a program that was um that was uh um 
talking about Islam in that kind of way because because uh, well, ask Salman Rushdie, he didn't go out for a long time, did he? But do you know what I mean? You, no. And I, and I can't. No, I don't agree with it, but I kind of get it. I kind of understand where they're coming from with it. But I mean, having watched it, I, I, well, we only watched one episode. But I didn't. I didn't hmm. think it was particularly. I mean, they were upset that God was a woman. Was was the, was the, was the first thing? Adam and Eve thing. were black. They might have got upset about that. I don't we, know. Yeah, like, it's not um, mentioned. But but I mean, there is an argument to say that they probably would have been where they were born. They would have been dark skinned at least, wouldn't they? I suppose. Really. But anyway, do you know what I mean? Well, you, you yeah. can't, I do kind of get it. But yeah, you you do. And 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 the response when they, whenever they complain is that people laugh at them, and you kind of think it wouldn't happen with any other. Like you wouldn't have see that with Judaism, would you? They they. That wouldn't happen. Uh, there's some truth in that. I think part of the answer is, uh, is to do with numbers. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, fortunately, the group hasn't threatened a, a fatwa on the writer. No. Uh, well, Terry is no longer with us, of course, uh, but the uh, uh, adaptations <laughs> by Neil... Gaiman or Gaiman. That, that would have been equally unsuccessful, wouldn't it, really? Well, That's it. Well, they, they, could argue, they could argue success. <laughs> hey, look, he's dead already. Blooming hell, that, God's that quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is, isn't she? <laughs> oh, anyway. Dear. I bet, they were I chuffed. I bet, I bet uh, Netflix were pleased. They were thinking, you know, they can make a joke of it because they weren't the ones in the in the firing line for it, were they? <laughs> well, yeah, their PR departments have gone into overdrive and promised, in quotes, in a spoof press release, in effect, that they, they will halt production. Uh, I suppose they'd have to start it first to, to halt it. <laughs> to halt uh, it, yeah. but, but I quite like the fact Amazon got in on the act as well. Uh, Twitter's a wonderful thing, and it's free at the point of view, so uh, why wouldn't you string it string along and have another promotional opportunity uh, amazon playfully we are assured uh, according to the bbc said they would cancel the netflix hit stranger things in return so it's a uh, it's a kind of uh, so it's not all bad tat. news then is it well i i haven't seen said stranger things but <laughs> you were saying some unflattering things about it before we hit record <laughs> i think it's a kids program that's why it's not really for me oh, right. right well i'm not so sure actually now you mention it. Although I am rather young at heart. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on, because yeah. uh, that could open up a whole uh, can of worms and things which ju just wouldn't um, hold up in court, um, <laughs> including your health. Um, so shall we, uh, shall we lead into our first uh, audio clip or a bit of scene setting? What have we got here? What would you say in terms of genre? It's a, is it a buddy-buddy thing? You've got, a, uh, I, would, yeah. I would have said it's a comedy thriller. Wouldn't yes, you? Wouldn't you, would you agree with that? It's certainly got some shocking elements and some dark uh, undertoes. I have uh, to say, yeah. I, I think I think they also they they play the drama quite well. I mean, it's not it's not always a given that if you've got a comedy cast that they can do the bits that make you go, "Oh, what's going to happen here?" There. I mean, I'm not you're not hiding behind your sofa by any stretch of the imagination, but they do the drama well, don't they? Don't you think? Yes. Yes, you do believe it when you look into their eyes. Yeah. Matthew, I think, particularly does shock horror particularly well and, and be a man under the cosh. So uh, he might be on a mobile phone. Basically, uh, he nearly got run over. It's quite. Um, I would have thought that's a, a great uh, bit of video if you're a, a stunt driver um, to, to have uh, in your CV, nearly running over or apparently running over Matthew Bainton. I did wonder for a moment whether it was a... Uh, it's a post-production fix. It, it was. There's, there are two. It, there's the, a moment where it doesn't look quite real. There's two against. shots, isn't there? There's one where mm. you see his face and the car mm. is coming to his towards his back, and I think mm. that's CGI'd. Yeah. And then there's the other one, which is his field of view, and the car rolling over, and I think that's that's the real deal. Um, mm. That's an awesome crash, though, isn't it, for a TV? Do you know the the weird thing? And we were just talking just before we started recording. I'd watched this before I've watched the, to the end of series one. Mm. And and my memory had completely eradicated the fact that it was snowing in that first scene or in that, right. that, that crash scene. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I thought, oh, this, isn't where the, this is where the car crash. I know, it, well, it can't be because it, it's snowing. And I, how weird is that? That, you, that? Like a really significant part of it, isn't it, really? Uh, it is, it's not subtle because it's real snow. It's not just mm. like you can tell it's, uh, oh, they faked it for this one shot. Um, and and it, it certainly gives loads of atmosphere to it. I mean, an absolute gift visually. 
Um, but yes, it is strange. But then I guess you were homing in on, on the action. And uh, mm. I, I don't say the love of your life, Matthew Bainton, because I've already overstretched that point. <laughs> but, how, we- uh, how weird. And you were saying about how you thought he was quite realistic in that. And yet when you saw him in Ghosts, you didn't like his performance. And when you saw him <laughs> in Quacks, you didn't like his performance. Uh, that's what, Don't you think that's odd? Uh, well, it's not the full story because I, I said if you if you rewind, uh, I was talking about the horror, and you believe his you know his reaction shots, as it were. Mm. Um, I didn't say I liked everything else of his performance. Sorry, Matthew, fact, I tried, I, mate. I tried. To, <laughs> I no, try. I don't dislike. I've never met the guy, so uh, there's nothing personal. It can be nothing personal. I, I will tell you uh, in a while if I remember to. Uh, because I don't want to hunker down too much here while we're setting the scene, but mm. I've worked out what what my what I find his limitation, which was, is irksome. Well, he's with us tonight, Matthew. Come on in. <laughs> tonight, Matthew, I will be Matthew. Yeah. Oh no, hang on, that doesn't work. Um, anyway, look, I'm trying to set the scene. Anyway, Sorry. so this car flips over, um, and uh, I kind of. I don't need to get into too much detail, but he, he swoons at the sight because it's not a pretty sight when a car's flipped over. It's just the, the driver in the car. Um, and uh, then sometime, oh, yeah, there's an inter- interesting uh, exchange with the with the law, good cop, bad cop, which I quite enjoyed. Um, but pa- basically a phone is left, apparently thrown from this car uh, that he picks up, and that's where, you know, uh, the intrigue and indeed a bit of uh, you called it a comedy thriller didn't you so mm. yeah a bit, a bit of the thrill comes from um cut to uh, he works at uh, Berkshire County Council in fact we'll hear that in the first clip um so I'll let him tell you what uh, his job is uh, the James Corden uh, character he'll also tell you what the job title there is they are, we we've established in the office they are at least on friendly terms whereas mm. Mostly, um, the, the James Corden character, uh, Phil, gets ignored by the others. A little bit sad, really, as with a lot of comedy, there's a, a kind of tragic undertow. I kind of um, got the impression that the, the Matthew Bainton character just couldn't couldn't be nasty. And so mm. that's how he ended up being friends with Phil, isn't it, really? Because he just couldn't, he just can't, you know, if you see somebody being nasty to him or rejecting him, he can't, he has to make amends kind of thing. Yeah, so he's got a good heart, so he's likeable. Yeah. A bit like your Mr. Sheen character being the angel last week in Yeah, yeah. Uh, So we find them on the roof uh, of uh, the county council and uh, and Ma- Ma- the Matthew character, uh, Sam, is implied. He's just told him, explained the situation and how a, a, a call, a phone call... Um, with, I think I need to at least explain there's a threat within the phone call. Someone's life is in danger. Obviously, it's not uh, Sam, uh, Sam's phone, so it's not his wife, because um, he ain't married. That's a very good reason it's not his wife. So anyway, this is uh, the revelation for the James Corden character, Phil, of what's going on with this phone and uh, the intrigue that follows. Oh, my God! Oh! <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! Gilly god! That's not helping! They don't know who they're messing with. They don't have a clue who they're messing with. They want to mess with us! What are you talking about? They're not messing with us. They're not even messing with me. I'm the wrong man. They're trying to mess with the guy from the car crash. Well, he's out of the game. This isn't a game. So why have I got my game face on? Because that's what you're looking at, my game face. We need a plan of action because we sure as shit can't call the police. Oh, they said they were going to kill her if you called the police. Just before that. But what did you say? Nothing. I just left a message to call me back. Good. From now on, we just ignore them. This is ridiculous. You're looking at this the wrong way. This is our moment. We've been chosen. I'm a town planning and noise guidance advisor for Berkshire County Council. You're a 31-year-old male distribution assistant who lives with his mum. Exactly! Stuff like this never happens! I don't want it to happen! Do you know the, the county council doesn't actually exist? Berkshire County Council was abolished in 1998. 
Which is why they're able to uh, monkey around. That's why they. That's why they used it. Yeah, because I thought that's a oh, bit nice weird. So, so check it out. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I, this is this already at this point when I'm watching it, I'm kind of thinking about James Corden, and mm. and I, you know I kind of understand what he's trying to do with the character, but I just wanted to dial it back a bit. It, it, too big. It, yeah, for me, to, a bit, just a bit, and I'm just kind of thinking, oh, just just dial it. You know, we get it. We we got the. But you don't have to do it 100 miles an hour all the while. The interesting thing about that was that I saw an interview, the two of them being interviewed about it, mm. and they were talking about injuries. I think I think James Corden ended up with getting whacked in the face with a broom at some point during filming because um, they were saying, you know, how dangerous it was with the stunts and that, and they said, you know, how dangerous was it for you? And um, there's a bit where they, they, they go on where he tries to throw his mobile phone away and James Corden gets him in a bear hug. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Matthew Bates said that was the only time he got injured. He said, I had bruised ribs by the time we'd finished filming that scene <laughs> because he kept hugging him so violently. It was a very tight hug, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But, um, yes, and I don't, I don't know. Am I am I being oversensitive? I, I, he gets on my wick as a as a host, I think, I think. Did I say that on the Well, you said that last week? week. So I thought what you said was he gets on your wick as a host, um, you know, when he's doing awards ceremony and, and all of that, uh, a little bit, um, shall we say, uh, what would the phrase be? Um, subservient or, you know, kowtowing to the big names and so on. Yeah, I mean, he's, play, he's you... playing the liberal agenda game. I mean, only this week, because he's, he's late show, he's, in, he's been filmed in London this week, and only this week in a trail he said, we were trying to, they were trying to line up some guests, you know, like they did for this trail, and he's going, who can we get, who can we get? Who's who's the American answer to the Queen? And they went, Michelle Obama. And I'm thinking, really? Are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> Which, were you um, thinking M- Melania? Trump. But I no, I wouldn't think of any of them really. I mean, they haven't got an equivalent of the Queen, have they? Really, they, you've got a ninety-year-old woman who's wealthy. But I mean, Bette Midler probably comes a bit closer than anybody else, <laughs> doesn't it? Really, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? but um, She's, yeah, I'm and the I just wind thought, beneath her wings. I just thought, oh, he's playing the Hollywood liberal card, and he's, uh, you know, so, but, and, oh, who can blame him? He's he's he's, gonna, he's earning big bucks out there, and he so you know, if he's playing a game, fair play. If he believes it, fair play. It's his it's his choice, isn't it? Really. Well, as he said when he took over the uh, chat show, is it CNN? No, it can't be, can it? Uh, it's it is, MNBC, isn't it? Isn't it? Um, whatever it is. He said, uh, well, I've done my uh, 10,000 hours. You know the 10,000 hours thing hmm. to get proficiency at a skill. Um, so I thought that's good. That's a bold statement. Um, and, uh, yeah, there might be one or two loveys in lovey land, a little bit envious of uh, him having that platform. And... Uh, <laughs> The steady money that comes with it compared to uh, on and off acting. From an actor in in this perspective, though, I mean, I I'm, I'm I don't know. I couldn't make up my mind whether I and you'd be able to tell me whether I'm at an advantage or disadvantage, having not seen. I think I'm the only person in the UK never to have seen Gavin and Stacey. Uh, well, certainly, uh, I, I was glad to have seen it because it, it brought that back. Actually, how much I do actually respect uh, James Corden as an actor. He's so natural. Um, uh, before we go any further, can I invite you to give us a headline uh, as to your reaction uh, to what you saw, episode one, series one of uh, The Wrong Man's? I'd, I'd be The Wrong Man's the right place. I mean, I, I, I watched the whole of the first series and I really liked it. I thought it was, I thought, you know, I thought it was well cast, well written, um, mm-hmm. well acted, believable. The thrilling bits were thrilling. Um, the the comedy bits were funny. The characters were likable, uh, apart from the ones who weren't supposed to be. Mm. You, it was one of those, and I don't know whether you you like this or not, but I like things that, first of all, sp- like drip feed the story, drip feed little bits, little like a they make it like a jigsaw puzzle, so you kind of go, oh, there's a bit of sky there. So you're drawn in. Yeah. yeah, I like that, and also um, I, I like the way that um, it, it's kind of um, like I say it's got it's got a believable strand. I mean, it's, it's an unbelievable story, isn't it? In a way, and as it unfolds, it gets even more unbelievable. But I kind of like the way that it's 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 um, sort of based in reality, as it were. You know, he's just a guy who works for the council. I kind of like those two things about it. But I love the way that they snap the pieces into place as it goes on. Mm. Um, what about you for a head? What about you for a headline? Then what are you? Oh, headline. Um, 
Do you know what? I, uh, well, I'll come to a separate issue in a mo. Um, yeah, headline, wrong one. Mm. Uh, sadly, I'm the wrong man. Uh, I'd have to say it was a really arbitrary or a trivial thing why I was drawn to it. I was drawn to it by the a deliberate grammatical error in the title. Mm. And uh, I had to say that was that was the single biggest intrigue for me in it. And, and it still is, having watched it, which is not great flattery. Uh, if the don't, title, don't you get me, the title? <clears throat> I, I still don't quite get it. This is my ideal but, moment, isn't it? This is my turn to get an ideal. Yeah, o- yeah. Sorry, although I've mine was been thick. flaming obvious, mine was. I mean, I could, still can't <laughs> believe that one. Um, the Don't wrong, beat yourself up. It's basically he's Matthew Bainton is the wrong man. Yes, but but the S in lowercase that they put on the end of it is like he's he's James Corden tagging along. No, actually, it's the wrong man's. So well, that's the, what I thought, but then still doesn't quite work, does it? Anyway, I probably shouldn't obsess about it. It's only a title. Um, I thought it was, yeah, he was the plural, but then I wonder, I mean, do we ever hear the the phrase? We, we heard, obviously, in that clip, the wrong man, fine. Uh, that explains it, if, mm. if, 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 if it were needed by them, which it probably isn't for anyone. But the wrong mans, do we ever hear it plural? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's just a, just a title. Isn't there a Hitchcock film called The Wrong Man as well? That I don't know. Uh, I could look up sneakily while we play the next clip. Um, I I think it probably is time for the next clip, isn't it? I won't go launching into the next topic. Uh, we'll see if we have time for talking about colour palettes, the other side of this. Anyway, um, right, so into uh, clip number two. Uh, not great news for Shane if he doesn't like James Corden going large with his voice because we're going to hear that again here. But I, I think this is quite amusing. And what I should explain, because obviously it's an audio clip, we're an audio podcast, what you're not seeing in the pictures or what you're missing from not having pictures is that while this is going on, because the two of the guys are the, two, the wrong mans indeed, are plotting, you know, where are they going to go next? What are they going to do? How are they going to approach this task that they've set themselves? Um, while this is going on, uh, Phil, the uh, James Corden character, is rolling sushi with extra delicate uh, care. You said what? I said, can we make it six? <laughs> nice! Yeah, badass, you bring that attitude at six o'clock when we're all up in their grill, when we're face to face with these bastards. We're not getting in their grill, Phil. Remember the plan. We're just going to give the phone back to this Mr. Stevens guy. Let's go. Well, riddle me this. What if he's dead? He isn't dead. He might be. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Can we please just go? We're going to cross a lot of bridges, Sam. Jump a lot of hurdles. I need to know that I'm with someone who's got my back. Someone who's prepared to roll deep. Are you prepared to roll deep? I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't think you do. I'm talking about rolling deep! Because that's how I roll! I roll deep! Deep! So the thing I picked up from that scene is that he rolls deep. Apparently. Is that actually a thing? I don't know. I I must have, at the point where where he went, I don't know what you mean, I was thinking exactly the same thing. Yeah. Which I thought was quite curious. Am I being... um, Fattest, if I say that he didn't strike me as the kind of character who would eat sushi. I, I don't know. It's um... <laughs> well, arguably, you could say people who who may have a weight problem are most likely if they're trying to do something about it. I, I do actually know someone who did uh, resort to a sushi diet, so it does did, happen. Did they make their own? No, <laughs> no. I, I that's probably I've... not a thing. But he was rolling deep the sushi, wasn't he? <laughs> rolling deep. Yeah. So, uh, that might just be me imagining it. I mean, I don't. I, well, I liked remember... it because it was so um, so unbutch to roll sushi, right? While you're talking about you know a potentially murderous um, the case you're on. I can't remember whether it has any relevance later on as well. It may do, and I you know I I, I can't remember. In fact, I'm I'm kind of wetting my appetite to go back and watch the. The rest of them, and then maybe venture into series two, which is set in the US, which which I think was the thing that stopped me from 
rushing off to see it in the first place. I think mm. I think Matthew Bainton at the time, because he's got an American agent, as as is James Corden. I think they were both quite keen uh, to crack America at the time, and I think <clears throat> you know maybe that was uh, that was all part of it. I don't know, but uh, yeah. Um, but go on. What are you going to say about color palettes? Color palettes. Yes, I became obsessed by the color palette uh, at the county council. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm, now I find myself thinking, well, if there's no Berkshire County Council, I know there are unitary authorities. Like, well, don't start me on Slough again. I have got issues with any show that's anywhere near Slough. Mm. It, it is shorthand again, isn't it, for council workers? Shorthand for ordinary people meant to relate to ordinary viewers, I think. But yeah. don't start me on that one. The colour palette is such that the logo and all the stationery and all of that of uh, this fictitious, as it turns out, Berkshire County Council, uh, it's all in the... Uh, would you call it teal? I yeah, quite like I, that would, word. I would call yeah. it teal, actually. Teal. Yeah. Did you notice that even the box... You know, if, um, if you're a PC person, uh, a box pops up, a window, the strip on the top of the... A uh, box even had been changed to teal. That's not the default. We all know it's blue, isn't it? The default for uh, Microsoft. Um, so there's some obsession here. I mean, hats off to the designer for going to that uh, degree of trouble. Did you also see there was a pen holder in teal on the desk? No. And no one was wearing anything too far from green stroke blue stroke teal. And and it was. And I just thought, okay. I've clocked it. It's clearly a thing. It's clearly not coincidence. But how is it helping the story? And unfortunately, for a couple of minutes, I was so engaged in the colour palette, I didn't really follow the plot. I thought it would work. You know, in an advert, a 30-second spot ad, if your organisation has teal logos and stationery and everything, that makes sense to me. You have a whole teal palette in those 30 seconds but not for an entire long scene where even people's clothes are restricted from being, you know, all, all colours of the rainbow as they are I, in the real world. I was um, I was planning to go and get myself tested for attention deficit disorder. <laughs> do, you, um, do you want to come with? <laughs> no, it's more OCD, isn't it, in my case? But I, I, I think I the designer's know. got the same it's issues. Just, it's just like all that action's going on around you, all the plot lines and all, all the... All the is. And all the... All the <laughs> All the script that they've lovingly crafted, and all you're looking at is the bloody pen holder. <laughs> well, it's not my fault if the designers decided, and presumably everyone's gone along with it, to obsessively restrict the colour palette. I never noticed. So mm. now I, I don't well, know how that back, makes you feel. Go back. I never well, noticed. I, I don't know if I didn't notice artist, the second time round. I, I don't know. No, it's just it's just odd. I don't get the argument for it really. Right. If it's that. Well, it clearly didn't distract you, but anyway, very neat in its way. <laughs> I do you know the other thing? Um, uh, oh, there was a there was a line in there, and it was the it was the answer to another line, and I've lost it now. So just ignore me. Go on, I'm just no, I can't possibly ignore you. You're one of those people. Try as I might, ignore you, I cannot. I can't. I can't. Well, uh, what sort of line are we along? Have you got it, any? No, rough no. It was, there was there was a piece of dialogue, and I thought, oh, that was a callback to something else, and and uh, no, I've not, lost it. It's obviously not roll deep. I I tell you what, I did want to say. Did you did you clock who the voice on the phone was um, that was making all the threats and saying that he got Matthew Bainton's wife and all that sort of stuff? Because whenever he's in, and he's been he's been in loads of things. He's an actor. Mm. Uh, called Benedict Wong, and every time he's in something, I automatically recognise his voice. Right, I, and and he's been because he's been in something. Um, he's been in, in in a comedy with. Uh, oh, I'll tell you, it's with it. I'll probably give it away. Have you? Do you know? Do you know what it is that he was in? Uh, no, it's not ringing any bells. I'm afraid he was he was the flatmate of Sean Locke in Fifteen Stories High. Oh gosh, right. No, to tell you who I was thinking of, I was thinking that Oriental uh, people, or people with Oriental roots, can get a bit of a bad rap. I was thinking of um, Inside Number Nine. That flatmate there is a bit of a screw loose. That's a female. Oh yeah, uh, that, yeah, actress the one, with yeah. Oriental roots. I'm probably second, third generation Brit, but uh, I did wonder about that. It, it turns around at the end when she's at you know their Christmas dinner, but uh, hey. 
let's not go down there that road i'll be choked again um so you haven't worked out whatever road you were launching down no it must have been must have been a right ladder hokey that's all i can say <laughs> I, I, kept Shall seeing, I, leave... I kept seeing Sorry. faces that i knew popping up as well yeah um uh, did you see the, the two coppers, Sergeant Ince, the sergeant who who a he good was? Cop, bad cop. He'd been. Uh, in, I recognise him as a Scottish guy. The, well, the Scottish guy had been in the thick of it. I don't know if you've seen. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, I've definitely seen. Oh, does he play another PR guy opposite uh, Capaldi? The, yeah, the the other guy, the, the sergeant, Cal- does. Caledonian Mafia. That's it, yeah. And the other copper was in 2012. He was the guy that was always fed up in 2012, and he said, "Oh, this is a load of old rubbish, isn't it?" And all, all that sort of stuff. He's but he wore glasses in that, and he was a lot. He was a lot fatter in the face, right? Um, but uh, yeah, um, and of course, Tom Basden, you never mentioned that's uh, that's his arch nemesis uh, no. in the office, isn't he, with him? Uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, where where did Tom did he pop up in this episode then? Yeah, he was the he was the guy um, who was always needling him in the office. Oh right, okay. I did. I didn't find. I, I, you know, the, the reason I haven't uh, given us an audio clip from the office of the uh, the uh, Berkshire County Council, I didn't find any of that that interesting. Um, but it turns out I went for the bit of James Corden's uh, comedy repertoire that you don't particularly like, which is his large, going large. Going large, yeah. I, found, I did I, find out the bit that I was going to say, actually, was when he started off and he said about saying six o'clock, because in the previous scene, he'd been on the phone to the kidnapper or the extortionist oh, yeah. to whoever he was and said, you've got to be here at five o'clock. And his ex-girlfriend, who's now his boss, said, you're not going early. And he went, can you make it six? Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the thing kid- is... The kid Phil, Phil thinks that makes him really hard because he's taken yeah. on this potential murderer, but actually it's because he's soft because he can't face his ex. But it was like place. it was like the guy on the other end of the phone kind of gave in. He went, "Fine, six o'clock." <laughs> but <laughs> also, did you notice? Uh, of course, it being an audio clip, our listeners uh, won't know unless they've seen the show. It is actually already gone six o'clock. It's very obviously the clock at the back of the uh, the room they're in, where the sushi is being deep rolled. Um, it's gone six. So, I mean, what's that saying? They can't even keep to the revised schedule. Or, or was it six o'clock the next day? Or oh, No, that couldn't uh, have been six o'clock in the morning. No, no, I don't think so. No. So no. They're, they're potentially in extra trouble for being late even compared to uh, the original five o'clock and then the six o'clock. Anyway, um, third and final clip, yes? Yeah, yeah. Somehow we end up in a hospital. Well, of course, the guy in the car that rolled over several times has been quite badly injured so he's a major part of the uh, plot line so our hapless individuals i sort of said earlier i thought it was a buddy movie you said it's comedy thriller i think it's a bit of both isn't it i think it's so fair to say yeah i think there's, yeah, there, is, there is the body a fusion element, isn't a fusion so they end up in the hospital i don't know that i need to get into too much detail but uh suffice to say our Matthew Bainton character, Sam, ends up on, uh, is it called a gurney? Anyway, yeah. a trolley, a hospital trolley, yeah. um, about to um, have his leg amputated by mistake. Sorry, spoiler alert. Uh, we do that occasionally. Other episodes are available. Um, and uh, the uh, James Corden character, Phil, is rushing in to try and stop this happening. And then it leads to, cover your ears, Shane, it leads to another big speech uh, sort of uh, uh, Shakespearean style, Henry V, St. Crispian's Day type speech by, yes, JC himself, James Corden. Stop! Help! Stop! You've got the wrong patient! What are you talking about? This is your patient! Then we're gonna cut my fucking leg off! Well, who are you then? This is Mr. Pinky, he's my patient! I'm oh, sorry, my legs are fine! How did this happen, Phil? I'll tell you how it happened. Happen because this country's going to hell in a handcart. And it's mistakes like this that give us a bad name. MRSA! I know we're all tired. Working too long for too little and we're fed up. We cannot allow things like this to happen. This, this is making me very nervous. Now I know you're a good surgeon. I've seen your work and I won't let you hang for this. The first rule of being in this room is you don't talk about being in this room. Agreed? Yes. Yes. Agreed. 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 
I'm glad you chose those clips actually because it kind of illustrates mm-hmm. my point quite nicely that those are three scenes that he's like three key scenes that he's been in and they're all mm-hmm. played the same, aren't they? They're all played big and large at, at you know ninety mile an hour and you you kind of think there's no there's no he doesn't see he doesn't appear to have any any shade to his light. Is that really true? I mean, I I chose those for the uh, the bigness, if you will, of uh, the performance. Is that true? I mean, we've heard him. He can bring it down even within one of those sessions, like uh, the the second clip with the sushi. He ha- he has got a dynamic range there. Actually, that leads me rather neatly to my concern about Matthew Bainton, and it is his limitation. Arguably, it's mine, but I'm not an actor. I'm more presenter type. He hasn't got much vocal range, Matthew Bainton. And it reminds me, actually, uh, of what well, it's, it's the same beef I have with Kenneth Branagh. At the mm. time, everyone was lauding him as the new Laurence Olivier and all of that. I thought, he ain't, because of the voice. It's a little bit whiny, Branagh's and Bainton's. Bainton, OK, comedy actor, you can be whiny for comedic effect. Um, again, I've got nothing against these individuals personally, because I've never met either of them. No, but, no. But I just think, isn't that part of the act? Shouldn't that be part of your palette as an actor? Coming back to the word palette again. Well, you see, I'm I'm kind of the same with 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 Corden in as much as I don't. You know, you were saying about how um, I forgot what you said about his acting earlier, and I thought actually, actually no, what it is is he just plays James Corden in everything. Um, and, but do we um, know that for a fact, not knowing well, the guy? Well, well, only if you look at him. If you look at him doing his talk show, either that or he's playing the same character in his talk show as well. But no. or if you see him interviewed, he's he's not. There is, it's really interesting. I'm reading um, uh, Michael Caine's um, second, I think it is second biography. Which is a bit of a weird book, actually. It's a bit like a it's a bit like a self help for struggling actors kind oh, of dear. book. It's a, it's a bit weird. What sort of year was it? What sort of what? What sort of year, roughly? Oh, is it quite recent? I think he's just, oh. he just decided to write a decided to write another one. Um, but he was saying about how um, he, he he by his own admission he struggled with accents. He couldn't. He can't really be, um, you know, anything other than comfortable with being a, a Cockney kind of thing or being you know the the kind of because he's the same, isn't he, Michael Kay? I mean, to me, that doesn't. That doesn't. You can still do that and be a good actor. I think David Jason is a good example of that. Is that you know when he does Morse, you never think, oh, that's Del Boy, and when he does Del Boy, you never think, oh, that's Granville. But he doesn't significantly change his voice, right? So there's something else going on there. But I think you know, to me, there's that he's Gordon is the same, and, and I suppose Bain, Bainton is as well. But I kind of I kind of warm to him more than I do to James Gordon for whatever reason. Mm. Mm. I mean, I, world, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 this is this thing, isn't it? About I always remember. I never told you this before. I, I used to watch Coronation Street quite regularly, mm. and there was a character in that called Mike Baldwin, um, and he had a girlfriend in in the series, and I used to think, oh, she's great. She she was like a kind of brassy northern type, you know, mm. and. Uh, it was she left the soap, and then it was I don't know about three months afterwards. I sort of been interviewed, and she was Scottish. And you could have knocked me down with a feather. And I just thought, now that's an actor because yeah. if I bumped into her in the street, I wouldn't recognise her from the character that she played, although she looked the same. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm a bit old fashioned in in expecting, or kind of secretly wanting all actors to have that range, um, but. In a sense, it, you know, provided they find their niche, doesn't matter really, does it? And I'm sure they're not weeping themselves to sleep every night. No, I, I guess, I guess not. And uh, um, it's interesting because Michael Caine was saying that he said about how he cut his teeth in repertory theatre, which is very different to the young actors today who cut their teeth in TV dramas mm. and soaps. He said, which is just, you know, it's just the way it is, and it's different, different times now. Yeah. Um, I mean, there were some great points. I thought. I thought, you know, the 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 atmos and the and the music and the it was again. It was it was was it last week we were saying about uh, Good Omens, even bigger, I suppose, even more so. Very cinematic, but this is kind of a little yeah. touch of cinematic in it as well. It's very well put together, isn't it? 
Oh, yeah, it's uh, our old friend, high production values, uh, without a doubt. So everyone's giving their best. Uh, absolutely massive. If you look at the credits, I suppose you, uh, I was looking on IMDb, the Internet Movie Database, and mm. uh, that's covering all... Is it, so it's, it's run to two series. There's no more than... It didn't run to a third, did it? That's it, no. I mean, the latest no. news is um, that they're going to remake it um, which always really, really winds me up, actually. Um, but they're going to remake it for America, um, and they're going to completely remake it and recast it. And there's talk about they've they've got to put a woman in one of the lead roles because that's the, the flavour of the month at the moment. And you kind of think, it, it, do you know we embrace so many American series? Mm. It really winds me up that that there are exec, and I don't think it's even the American people, but there are executives in American television who think that you know, oh, they'll never understand what they're saying or whatever whatever, whatever their reason, mm. it's rubbish. And I think, you know, if it is audiences, my message to you is just expand your horizons, just try a little harder. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, uh, I, I think it is about making the effort and absorbing yourself in another world. And there is uh, certainly a sense of a cultural ins- insularity in America, isn't there? Um, I, guess, I guess I mean I I'm not sure I don't know whether it's it's that kind of you know uh, TV exec um, parental thing where they know what's best for the audience and they're going to protect them from themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, you know I've never actually spoken to an American person and said right re, you know watch this see what you think can you deal with it can you cope with it can you understand I mean that's probably why they have such a little idea of what the UK is like is because. They don't. They only see things that are that are turned into American programs, or or Americanized versions. I mean, step up to the uh, witness box, uh, Richard Curtis, for trying to make London look like chocolate box London yeah. with snow and pillar boxes every third feet, and uh, yeah, and so on and so forth. You know, Bridget Jones. You know, it has to be super English. I mean, well, I surprise myself when I kind of get confronted by it. I remember being at a theme park in Florida once and uh, Mary Poppins uh, threatened to call security on me if I didn't stop ridiculing her accent because... <laughs> and and I, was, I said to her, I said, oh, that's a lovely accent. Where are you from? She's going, oh, I'm from Liverpool. And I said, well, you don't sound like you're from Liverpool. And, and she basically said, if you don't get off, I'm going to call security. <gasps> and I thought, well, that's not very Mary Poppins, is it? You know, but, No, she um, wouldn't have done that. But yeah, so you should have said Maori Poppins, like Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's you know, like I say, I don't know whether it's if you if you presented it, and it's not always a bad thing. I mean, I I thoroughly enjoyed the American version of The Office, mm. um, which which became a beast of its own, and and yeah, you know, was was bore very other than the first series bore very little resemblance to. Um, you know the office with Ricky Gervais, but hmm. I think it, it still stood up on its own. So it's not always a bad thing, but you just kind of get sick of it. And you think, can't you guys just watch? You know, what do we have to remake this now? And do we have to, mm. you know, putting a woman in it for the sake of it? I mean, have you learnt nothing from remaking Ghostbusters and losing all that money? What's the matter with these people? You know, I, I, crazy, crazy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it must be that time to uh, allocate scores out of five each and try and tot it up to ten to reach a conclusion. Uh, Whose turn to go first? Shall I go well, first? Well, as they say in Dudley, it's <laughs> your turn to go first. <laughs> in Dudley. <laughs> Dudley. And, and, and we'll remake that sentence for our American listeners. As they say in Dudley... <laughs> I, I, really bet, work, does it? <laughs> I, I bet if just Google Dudley, D-U-D-L-E-Y, it'll all make sense. You probably get Dudley Moore, which is no bad saying. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Dudley Moore is a town in the West Midlands. Oh, it's what? bigger than Dudley Less. I thought it was Scrubland, Dudley Moore. Oh, Wormwood Scrubland. Oh, talking of know. talking of Americans' perceptions <laughs> of uh, of uh, the UK before I finish this, because you know I'm a I'm a big Aston Villa fan. Uh, Tragically, yes. I and, mean, yes. And actually, this is he was being interviewed by James Corden, funnily enough, on the Late Show. 
Oh, and wow. and uh, he was saying, he said, oh, oh Sorry, Tom, who's the he? I lost that. Is that. An Aston Villa player? Tom Hanks. No, Tom Hanks, sorry. S- sorry, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I said it actually. I, no, no, I wasn't listening properly, probably. So he was talking to Tom Hanks and he said, oh, because you, you like uh, what we call uh, football, you like uh, you soccer. call soccer, you know. <laughs> and he said, oh, yeah, so I do. And uh, James Corden, this is probably another reason I don't like him, said, oh, is it true you support some obscure football team? <gasps> Oh, and, you and, could have thrown a brick at your and, telly. And Tom Hanks said, uh, he said, well, there's nothing obscure about them. He said, but I, I, I really like Aston Villa. And he said, how did that come about? And he said, well, I was, last time I was in the UK, he said, I was up at five o'clock in the morning because I was jet lagged. He said, I hadn't really got a clue what was going on. And he mm. said, I put the TV on and saw the football scores. And he said, <laughs> and, he said winning? and he was like going, there's all these wonderful place names. And he was going, Chelsea won, Salisbury on Thwistle 4. And he said... <laughs> He said, I quickly, he said, and this one came up, Aston Villa. And he said, and I thought, oh, that sounds like a wonderful holiday destination. He said, <laughs> he said, he said I'm liking your English humour. He said, you're, you're, uh, he said, uh, you're, 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 you're staying in your Aston Villa, he said. And then oh. down below, down below you is Aston Harbour, he said. And I just thought, <laughs> what a wonderful. If he only knew. <laughs> Well, I think he does now, and I think he was just playing with it a bit. Cause he, and then he actually saw them play. I think he saw them play a friendly in, in the United States. Um, mm. But he said, yeah, and because and he, 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 if you're a Villa fan, the, the cry is up the Villa, right. um, which he's now which he's now adopted, and he, he's got all the lingo. But I just thought it, it sounds like a carry-on movie, doesn't it? Really? Yeah. But, um, anyway, sorry. Anyway, Score, uh, scores well, on the we doors. We digress. Yes, I'm going for uh, three out of five. Um, so high production values help it not be a two and a half out of five. Um, but. I'm sorry to say I have no desire to see any more episodes. I've got it now. I can park it. I'm I'm afraid I'm not sufficiently intrigued to know what happens next. Sorry to say. Oh, I've said that several times, but I'm sorry I've to got, say it. I've got to give it a four. Well, that's good. Uh, Don't and I was, going to, I was going to give it a three and a half. And the reason I gave it a four is because I think it does the other side of the coin, as I mentioned, it does the drama so well. Right. And and I really love the way that they told the story, you know, and and I, I don't know how much input James Corden's had into the to the writing of it. It's 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 written with the two of them together. Mm. Um but I think, you know, they they got it bang on. I think the the writing, the, the the pace of the story, the way they told it. I I I loved it. I thought it was really enjoyable. And I I think I've had my appetite whetted to go back and watch this and I might even watch series 2. I'm so, surprised you don't want to dive straight into series two, but then I suppose you've mentioned you know it's the American factor, perhaps. I f- I didn't realise how much I'd forgotten. Is the All other right, thing yeah, as you'd well. forgotten the snow anyway. Yeah, it's so unforgivable. I, I, I can't I can't really think what happened in the next episode or anything like that. So I think oh maybe it's time to revisit it again. So yeah, seven and a half then, not bad I suppose. It's been worse. It's we've, <laughs> we've been meaner. <laughs> we, we have jointly. Yes. Um, so do you want to know what the homework is for next week then? Oh, gosh, yes. Sorry. Thank you for the prompt. I've, I knew something else came next. Um, it is a BBC series, a recent one. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it went right under my radar as far as uh, live TV went. I didn't see it advertised or anything or know anything about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it stars Toby Jones. Doesn't everything these days. Yeah, he's got a good agent, hasn't he? I think. Oh, that's... I know where we're going. He wouldn't be a coach driver. By you the chance, got it he? in one. Yay! Baby. Oh, I've you... watched that one, but I'll happily watch it again for the slab. Have you watched all of it, the whole series? No, no, no. You know me. I'm Mr. Series One, Episode One. Ah, well, you see, I'm picking Series One, Episode Five. Oh, I'm not sure my brain can cope with that. Hang on, I'm going to have to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll have to run that past my therapist to see what, if they'll what let a rotter. me. <laughs> Although, do you know, it's not on the iPlayer anymore. It's not. It's oh. the, the BBC have taken it down. You but but hey, what a surprise. You can buy it on Amazon. No way. Well, I'll, I'm going to have to. Uh, I'll bill it back to you, of course. Of course. Uh, sorry, yes. did you say Series 1, Episode 5? Series 1, Episode 5 of Don't Forget the Driver, which used to be the sign, didn't it, on coaches? That don't forget, yes. It was, it was the, the tip jar, as it were. Yes, don't f- don't which will be lost right. on perhaps younger list- listeners and viewers, but at least you've explained it. Well, we'll see next week, won't we? But yeah, that's what I've chosen for next week's uh, for ho- next week's homework. So um, yeah, next week's episode of the Comedy Slab podcast, we'll be reviewing. Don't forget the driver, starring Toby Jones, series one, episode five. If you want to sing along. Fantastic. Do follow us on Twitter. We are, of course, at Comedy Slab, as we also are at uh, the Book of Face that famous part of the uh, Bible. 
Um, so we're at Comedy Slab there as well. And it, we seem to have cornered the market so far, touch wood, uh, with that name. Um, so if you, uh, if you Google us or use any other proprietary search engine, you'll probably not be too far off finding us we are uh, on uh, oh sorry you're probably about to say no i was just going to say you can get found. past episodes if you've obviously found us somewhere but uh, mm. if you want to subscribe and get regular updates on when the next episode out yeah, spreaker uh, apple podcasts or spotify or generally whichever place that you get your other podcasts you should be able to find us there as well because we're, we're we're quite uh, quite omnipresent aren't we we are indeed. I was going to put it slightly more crudely, but I won't because that, that would ruin the brand because we're so clean living here. We've got dog collars on. It's a shame you can't see. Although Shane's has got studs on it and it is leather, so that's a bit kinky if you ask me. He's, he's off clubbing shortly. Um, enough about that. Oh, do recommend us to friends and family and indeed uh, family pets, whomever. Uh, spread the word. Uh, we'll love you all the more for that. And it's not as if we don't already love you. And so until next time on the Comedy Slab podcast, thanks for being with us from, uh, from Shane and Adrian. Uh, in the meantime, I'm off over to Adrian's because I can't quite see from here on the on the <laughs> camera, but it looks like he's rolling some sushi. <laughs> I'm I, are deep you? rolling sushi. Oh. I roll deep. Are you going to roll deep? I'm rolling deep. Is it big enough for you or would you like it bigger? <laughs>